Brooks, it's Miss Knappenberger and Olive here, and we're here for Miss Kay and Olive's favorite tales. She's just gonna hang, she's annoyed that I was fussing with her. What I thought we could do for the end of the school year is to kind of do almost like a little book club. Um, where I recommend a couple of my favorite books to you, and Miss Olive can recommend a couple of hers. It's just going to be Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. That's okay. I thought we would start with fantasy. Fantasy is such a great genre because it's not just about, like, dragons and elves. There's so much more to fantasy than just sort of what immediately comes to mind. It's not just Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. Fantasy is a huge genre that encompasses lots of really cool ideas. So I thought I would go ahead and recommend a couple books and book series. Now I'm not going to recommend Harry Potter, even though I'm wearing a Harry Potter shirt, because everybody's going to recommend Harry Potter. Likewise, I'm not going to recommend Percy Jackson, everybody's going to recommend Percy Jackson. So I'm going to recommend a couple related similar titles and a couple that maybe you haven't heard of yet. So first off, I would like to recommend my favorite fantasy series. It's by the same author who did The Hunger Games. Now The Hunger Games is kind of an intense book series there's no bad words or um, adult content or anything like that, but it's kind of intense. The whole concept of making children fight each other to the death is kind of intense. So instead, I wanted to recommend Gregor the Overlander. Now, Gregor the Overlander is a fantasy series. There's five books in the Underland Chronicles, and it's about this boy Gregor. He's living in New York City in this apartment, his dad has been missing, and he's just kind of struggling a little bit with life. And so one day in the middle of the summer, he is doing laundry in the basement of his apartment building with his little sister, Boots. And she goes through this, like, vent in the wall, and he's like, Oh no, I have to go after my sister. I have to go get her. She's like, at two, she's a toddler. So he goes after her through the vent, and they fall down this shaft nice and slow so that they're not hurt, but when they get to the bottom of the shaft, they're met with a whole bunch of giant talking cockroaches. And Gregor's kind of like, what's going on? And it turns out there's an entire civilization underneath the Earth's crust, complete with humans. And it's this incredible, fantastical world of giant rats, and bats, and mice, and talking cockroaches, and humans with really, really pale skin that you can basically see through. So it's a really interesting concept. And then, of course, there's a prophecy and some other really cool, fantastical elements to it. So it's a really fabulous book series, and I actually like it better than The Hunger Games. Don't tell. I also did want to recommend Rick Riordan Presents. Now, if you don't know, Rick Riordan is the author of Percy Jackson. He wrote all of the Percy Jackson books. I believe he wrote all of the Magnus Chase books as well. And he's written a lot, and all of his books follow the same kind of formula, which is regular kid has some kind of mythical god connection. Percy Jackson is the son of a mortal person and Poseidon, one of the Greek gods. So he takes all of these different sort of mythologies and he turns them into adventure stories based around kids today. So if I remember correctly, the Magnus Chase ones are about the Viking mythologies and the Norse mythologies. Um, now, there are tons of cool mythologies and lores out there that Rick Riordan probably shouldn't be writing about because they're really culturally and ethnically specific. And he, being not from those cultures, it's sort of inauthentic to write about them. So what he did is he lends his name, Rick Riordan, that's all famous because of Percy Jackson, and he lends it to newer authors who write similar style books. So you'll notice that there's, whoop, 
um, nine on here and there's more coming out all the time and these are books written about different mythologies by authors of color featuring protagonists of color and because these authors are writing about mythologies that are close to their hearts and their cultures it's very authentic and it'll give space for authors of color in an otherwise sort of white dominated genre. So examples of this, um, the Arusha series, there are at least two of those based around Indian mythology. Um, I personally have almost finished, I'm not quite there yet, um, one based on Navajo and Hopi mythology called Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and there's just a lot of different cultures, ethnicities, and mythologies that have been brought in to the Rick Riordan Presents. So if you weren't a super big fan of the Greek gods, check out one of the other ones, because there's lots of different ones for you to be looking at. Hey, Bean. <laughs> Did I scare you? I know. Alright, so the next one I would like to recommend is Steelheart. Now, Steelheart is the first in a series by Brandon Sanderson. I like everything that Brandon Sanderson has written. If he wrote a grocery list, I would read it. Um, and so if you like this, there's tons of books by this author for you to be interested in and to read. And all of them, some of them are kind of intense, but all of them are appropriate for your age level. There's nothing like really bad in them that you would not be allowed to read or anything like that. Um, Steelheart is made for kids around your age, maybe a little bit older. She's fine. This one is about a futuristic United States and futuristic world where there's this weird thing in the sky that they've called Calamity and it showed up a couple years ago and what Calamity did was it gave some people powers. But the people who got powers turned kind of evil. So the people with powers are called epics, and they're all kind of horrible. So Earth has turned into this not super nice place because everybody's sort of living in fear of these super villains, almost and all the regular people are trying to figure out what to do about it. So the story revolves around a teenage boy named David whose father was killed by one of the epics, a particular epic named Steelheart who doesn't bleed. So he gets in with this crew of people who are trying to destroy epics called the Reckoners and he joins them to try and get revenge on Steelheart for the death of his father. It's a three book series and all of them are really great. The middle one is called Firefight and the last one is called Calamity. And like I said, I love everything by this author. So if you like this one, there's the Alcatraz and the Evil Librarians series, there's The Rhythmatist, there's the Mistborn books, there's the Wax and Wayne series, there's the um, Way of Kings series, which right now is only three books, but is going to be like 12. And each book is like, in the Way of Kings series, each book is somewhere between 800 and 1200 pages. So if you're one of those kinds of people who just loves a big thick book, and you just rip through things so quickly, Maybe check out Brandon Sanderson, because you'll be working on his stuff for a while. Okay, so the next one I would like to recommend is The Golden Compass. This is the first in a trilogy as well. Um, the whole trilogy is called His Dark Materials. Don't watch the movie. I've heard they've made it into a new TV show um, that's supposed to be a lot better, but I haven't watched it yet, so we'll see. This series centers around a young girl about... 1112 named Lyra Balakwa and she has there's something special about her but you don't really find out what right away you don't really know what's going on with her but it's in this alternate earth and later there's more about that alternate earth thing but it's on this alternate earth where every human has 
a daemon um, that goes along with them. Kind of like a demon, but not like evil, just sort of a spirit that is bonded to them. And when your children, your daemon is able to change shapes. And so Lyra's daemon is Pantalaimon, and Pantalaimon changes into all these different shapes, and he's always with her, and he's like part of her soul. And then when um, children hit puberty and become adults, their daemon gets stuck in one single shape. So uh, there are these bad guys out there. There are always some bad guys. And they're called the gobblers. And they've been stealing children to do experiments to figure out what's up with the connection between children and their daemons. And they steal one of Lyra's friends. So Lyra decides that she is going to go find the gobblers and get her friend back. And again, it's a really interesting trilogy, and it's not an easy read, necessarily. The language is pretty high in an, um, high level vocabulary, but it's really, really worth it, and I really enjoyed all of the books. I read these on audiobook, and the audiobook version had like a full cast, so that means that there was like a narrator voice, but then every other character who had dialogue had a unique actor portraying them, so that was really cool. Last but not least, I would like to recommend Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This is also one in a series as well. This one is a little bit less fantasy and a little bit more like steampunk. It's not quite so much dragons and magic as it is technology, but I still felt like it kind of fit into this because it's in a futuristic alternate earth where the earth has essentially been quarantined because this horrible plague has hit earth and has really just decimated the population. So uh, most of the events of this book take place on the moon, where humans have set up new colonies on the moon. So this one centers around a 16-year-old cyborg named Cinder who lives in New Beijing. And it's your classic Cinderella story. We've got our stepsisters, we've got our handsome prince, we've got a shoe, or in this particular case, a foot. But it's really, really done very differently. And sometimes when you read redone fairy tales, uh, just doesn't really hit the right notes and it's falls flat or it's kind of boring or you know it's too much like the original to be that interesting but this one is really unique it has a lot of fresh interesting elements and again it's one in a whole series as well called the Lunar Chronicles they don't all follow the same character either because this is just one fairy tale so a lot of the other ones follow other fairy tales and they all weave together into one big story. So that's a really cool thing. Alright, so that's it for fantasy today. Obviously there's tons and tons and tons of books out there and this is just the tip of the iceberg for me to recommend to you. But those are a bunch of ones that I watched and I really liked. Obviously Miss Olive's favorite fantasy novel is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim which I would not recommend watching the movie, personally. Go on. Oh, she's so good. Such a good girl. So that's it for fantasy, and we will see you in the next book club meeting for realistic fiction. This has been Miss Knappenberger and Olive's favorite tales. This is her favorite tale. <laughs>